if something hot comes up into that water, it heats it up. It can build up enough pressure that it finally just breaks through as, a, as an explosion, like a pressure cooker you're just letting loose. In the shadow of Mount St. Helens, a sleeping giant stirs. Recent reports have sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Hundreds of earthquakes have rattled the infamous volcano, awakening fears of a potential eruption. This seismic swarm is not just a series of tremors, but a chilling harbinger of what might be brewing beneath the surface. Is this the prelude to a catastrophic eruption foretold by experts? And scientists will continue to monitor the volcano's activity. The information released today was meant to educate people on what is going on. Let's find out. In the Pacific Northwest of the United States, nestled within the Cascade Mountain Range, lies a sleeping giant known as Mount St. Helens. This volcano, renowned for its catastrophic eruption in 1980, has a rich and tumultuous geological history that dates back over 40,000 years. Its story is one of creation and destruction, a testament to the Earth's ever-changing landscape. The geological history of Mount St. Helens is a tale as old as time, beginning with its formation during the Pleistocene epoch. Emerging from the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate subducting beneath the North American plate, this stratovolcano started to build its structure layer by layer with each eruption. Over thousands of years, it sculpted itself into the majestic peak known today. But why does this subduction lead to such explosive volcanic activity? The answer lies deep beneath the surface, where immense pressure and heat cause magma to form and rise, creating the potential for explosive eruptions. Mount St. Helens' most infamous eruption occurred on May 18, 1980, an event that remains etched in the memory of the Pacific Northwest and the world. What makes this eruption so significant, you might ask? It wasn't just the magnitude of the eruption, but the sheer scale of destruction it unleashed. Triggered by a magnitude 5.1 earthquake, the north face of the mountain collapsed in a massive landslide, the largest in recorded history. This landslide uncorked the pressurized magma within, leading to a lateral blast that devastated everything within a 230-square-mile radius. The 1980 eruption had far-reaching impacts, both immediate and lasting. The landscape around Mount St. Helens was transformed beyond recognition. Forests were flattened, rivers were clogged with sediment, and 57 lives were tragically lost. The eruption also spewed ash across the United States, altering weather patterns and disrupting lives far beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. It serves as a stark reminder of the colossal forces that lie beneath our feet, capable of altering landscapes and climates at a global scale. In the years following 1980, Mount St. Helens has not remained silent. The volcano has undergone several periods of reawakening and activity. From 1980 to 1986, a lava dome steadily grew in the newly formed crater. This dome-building phase was marked by smaller, but still significant, eruptions. Then, after nearly two decades of relative quiet, Mount St. Helens stirred again in 2004. This reawakening led to a new series of dome-building eruptions that continued until 2008. But what does this ongoing activity indicate? It's a clear sign that Mount St. Helens remains an active, good, and dynamic volcanic system, one that is continuously evolving and reshaping itself. The volcanic activity of Mount St. Helens is not just a series of isolated events, but part of a larger, complex volcanic region known as the Cascade Range. This range, home to numerous other volcanoes, is a testament to the volatile nature of the Pacific Ring of Fire. The frequent eruptions and seismic activity in this region remind us that the Earth is a living, breathing entity, constantly reshaping itself in powerful and often unpredictable ways. This brings us to the present day, where Mount St. Helens is shocking the world again. Since mid-July 2023, the ground beneath this infamous volcano has been trembling with an intensity not seen in years. But what does this mean? Are we on the cusp of a new chapter in the volcano's history? In a span of just a few months, over 400 earthquakes have shuddered beneath the surface of Mount St. Helens. This phenomenon, unprecedented in recent times, has caught the attention of scientists and the public alike. For a volcano that typically experiences around 11 earthquakes per month since its last eruption period ended in 2008, this is a dramatic increase. 
But why are these tremors happening now and with such frequency? Most of these earthquakes are minor, with magnitudes less than 1.0, too small to be felt by people. But the sheer number of them is what's truly alarming. It's as if the volcano is sending us a continuous, rumbling message. But what is it trying to say? Is Mount St. Helens reawakening, gathering energy for something bigger? The mystery deepens even further when you consider the nature of these earthquakes. They originate from a depth of around two to five miles below the crater floor, a zone that has been relatively quiet since the last eruption ceased. This depth range is significant, for it is here that magma chambers and their intricate networks of conduits reside. So, is this just the Earth settling, or is the magma on the move? Looking back at the catastrophic eruption of 1980, the current situation can't help but raise questions. Back then, a series of smaller earthquakes preceded the devastating blast that reshaped the landscape and claimed 57 lives. Today, as hundreds of tiny quakes ripple through the earth beneath Mount St. Helens, the parallels are unnerving. Are we on the edge of another major event, or is the volcano merely stretching in its slumber? Despite this flurry of seismic activity, Mount St. Helens remains at a normal alert level. There have been no significant changes in ground deformation and no unusual gas emission signs that would indicate a brewing eruption. This fact, while somewhat reassuring, doesn't diminish the intrigue of the situation. After all, volcanoes are known for their unpredictability. Yet, historical data tells us that Mount St. Helens is no stranger to seismic swarms. In the 1980s and 1990s, it experienced similar swarms of earthquakes, and none of those led to an eruption. This historical context offers a bit of reassurance, suggesting that while the volcano is indeed active, an eruption may not be imminent. However, the current pattern of seismic activity is the most intense since 2008, stirring up both intrigue and concern among scientists and the public alike. In this context, Understanding the relationship between earthquakes and volcanic activity becomes crucial. How exactly do these tremors beneath the Earth's surface connect to the potential awakening of a volcano like Mount St. Helens? Earthquakes and volcanoes are intrinsically linked, both being dramatic expressions of the Earth's internal energy. The majority of earthquakes at volcanoes are not caused by the movement of tectonic plates, as is common in many other regions of the world, but by the movement of magma beneath the Earth's surface. Magma, as it moves through the crust, exerts pressure on the rocks around it. This creates stress and fractures in the rock in a process known as magma intrusion, leading to small earthquakes, which are often the first indication that a volcano may be reawakening after years of slumber. Though these earthquakes are typically small, their frequency can be high, especially if the magma is moving vigorously or changing paths. However, the nature of these earthquakes can also vary. Some are caused by the breaking of rock as magma forces its way upward, known as volcano tectonic earthquakes. Others occur due to the movement of fluids like water and gas within the volcano's plumbing system. These are often referred to as long period earthquakes or tremors. But how do these subtle differences help scientists in predicting volcanic eruptions? Predicting volcanic eruptions is a complex science and seismic activity plays a critical role in it. Seismologists study the patterns and characteristics of these earthquakes to understand the behavior of the magma. For instance, a series of small, shallow earthquakes might indicate that magma is moving closer to the surface, a potential precursor to an eruption. On the other hand, deep earthquakes might suggest that magma is still far below the surface and that an eruption is not imminent. In the case of Mount St. Helens, the depth at which these earthquakes are occurring offers clues. The majority of the recent earthquakes have been shallow, originating within the upper crust beneath the volcano. This suggests that the seismic activity could be related to changes within the volcano's hydrothermal system rather than the movement of magma deep within the earth. But the relationship between earthquakes and eruptions is not always straightforward. Not all seismic activity leads to eruptions, and not all eruptions are preceded by significant seismic activity. This unpredictability is what makes volcanoes like Mount St. Helens so mysterious and captivating. However, one thing is certain. 
An increase in seismic activity, especially when coupled with other signs like ground deformation and gas emissions, warrants close attention. In the case of Mount St. Helens and indeed many other active volcanoes, the term recharging is often used to describe a specific phase in the life cycle of a volcano. But what exactly does recharging mean in a volcanic context? Simply put, volcanic recharging is the process whereby a volcano's magma chamber, the reservoir of molten rock beneath the surface, is replenished with fresh magma from deeper in the Earth's mantle. This process can have profound implications for the volcano's future activity. The recharging of a magma chamber is not an instantaneous event, but rather a gradual process. As magma rises from the mantle, it fills the spaces and cracks beneath the Earth's crust, exerting pressure on the surrounding rock. This pressure can lead to the fracturing of rocks, which is one of the primary causes of the earthquakes typically associated with volcanic recharging. The recent spike in seismic activity at Mount St. Helens, with hundreds of small earthquakes recorded since mid-July 2023, could be indicative of such a recharging process. But why does this matter? The influx of new magma into the chamber does more than just fill it up. It also introduces fresh heat and volatile gases. These gases, trapped in the magma, exert additional pressure on the chamber walls. As the magma heats up and stirs, it can cause more fracturing and, consequently, more seismic activity. This is why an increase in earthquakes at a volcano often draws the attention of volcanologists. It could be a sign that the magma chamber is being replenished and that the volcano is becoming more active. However, the occurrence of recharging does not necessarily mean an eruption is imminent. Many volcanoes go through long periods of recharging without erupting. The process can lead to a range of outcomes, from no visible activity at the surface to the formation of new magma conduits and eventual eruptions. In the case of Mount St. Helens, despite the recent surge in seismic activity, there have been no significant changes in ground deformation or gas emissions, which suggests that while the volcano might be recharging, it's not necessarily gearing up for an eruption. But what exactly happens during the recharging process? As magma accumulates, it can change the physical and chemical composition of the existing magma in the chamber. This blending of old and new magma can lead to changes in the viscosity and gas content, which can affect how the volcano erupts. For instance, an increase in gas content can lead to more explosive eruptions, as the gases expand rapidly when the magma reaches the surface. The recharging process also affects the surrounding rock. The pressure exerted by the rising magma can cause the ground above the chamber to uplift or deform. In some cases, this deformation is subtle and can only be detected by sensitive instruments. In others, it can be more pronounced, leading to visible changes in the landscape. However, in Mount St. Helens's current scenario, such deformations have not been observed. This absence of visible deformation, despite the flurry of seismic activity, contrasts starkly with the patterns observed prior to past eruptions, particularly the infamous 1980 event. In March 1980, a notable change was detected at Mount St. Helens. Earthquake activity started to increase dramatically, both in frequency and magnitude. These were not just minor tremors, but were strong enough to be felt by people in the surrounding areas. The earthquakes indicated that magma was on the move, rising towards the surface. In addition, the lead-up also saw visible changes in the landscape. The north side of the volcano began to bulge outward, a deformation caused by the intrusion of magma into the volcano's edifice. This bulging was a stark visual indicator that something significant was happening beneath the surface. Another critical aspect of the 1980 pre-eruption period was the composition and behavior of the magma itself. In the weeks leading up to the eruption, the magma became increasingly gas-rich, a factor that contributed to the explosiveness of the event. In the current scenario, there is no clear evidence of such a change in the magma's composition at Mount St. Helens. This difference could be crucial in determining the potential for a future eruption. However, it's important to note that each eruption is unique, and the signs and precursors can vary widely. Just because the current seismic activity at Mount St. Helens differs from the patterns observed in 1980 does not necessarily mean an eruption is off the table. The volcano has a complex and varied eruptive history, and its behavior can be unpredictable. 
After the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens has experienced several periods of seismic swarms, each with its unique characteristics and implications. One notable period of increased seismic activity occurred in the late 1980s and early 1990s. During this time, Mount St. Helens experienced multiple earthquake swarms, with the earthquakes primarily focused beneath the volcano's crater. However, unlike the present scenario, the swarms in the late 80s and early 90s were accompanied by minor eruptive activity. This period served as a reminder that even after a major eruption, Mount St. Helens remains an active system, capable of reawakening with little warning. In 2004, Mount St. Helens once again reminded the world of its volatile nature. A new swarm of earthquakes signaled the start of a renewed eruptive phase, which lasted until 2008. This period was marked by the growth of a new lava dome within the crater, a process accompanied by regular seismic activity, including both earthquake swarms and continuous tremor. The 2004 to 2008 episode was significant as it was the first notable reawakening of the volcano after the quiet period that followed the 1980 eruption. The seismic activity during this period was not only frequent, but also varied in nature, with patterns that intrigued volcanologists. The initial signs of reawakening began in September 2004, when a swarm of small earthquakes was detected, rapidly increasing both in number and intensity. These earthquakes were primarily shallow, occurring just beneath the crater, and were indicative of magma moving upwards. This movement was confirmed when, in early October, a new lava dome began to form, signaling the start of extrusive volcanic activity. The growth of the new lava dome was a remarkable process. Over the course of the next few years, the dome continued to expand, with magma oozing out at a relatively steady rate. This extrusion of lava was accompanied by small, repetitive earthquakes, often referred to as drumbeat earthquakes due to their rhythmic pattern. These earthquakes were believed to be caused by the breaking of rock as the magma forced its way to the surface, a process that was essentially non-explosive, but continuous. Throughout the 2004 to 2008 period, Mount St. Helens underwent several phases of accelerated dome growth, each accompanied by an increase in seismic activity. These phases were often interspersed with periods of relative calm, during which the seismic activity decreased. However, the volcano never truly returned to a dormant state during this time. The continuous tremor, another characteristic seismic feature of this period, was indicative of the ongoing movement of magma and volcanic gases within the conduit system. One of the most striking aspects of the 2004 to 2008 episode was the visual changes at the summit. The new lava dome grew to be hundreds of meters tall and wide, significantly altering the landscape within the crater. This growth was closely monitored by scientists using a variety of techniques, including aerial photography, satellite imagery, and ground-based surveys. These observations helped scientists understand not only the rate and pattern of the dome's growth, but also the evolving structure of the volcano. Moreover, it served as a practical test for the monitoring techniques and technologies that had been developed since the 1980 eruption. This rich trove of data has now set the stage for addressing one of the most pressing questions in volcanology. What could happen next? Given the current seismic activity at Mount St. Helens, various future scenarios are conceivable, each with its implications and potential impacts. One possible scenario is that the recent earthquake swarm is a precursor to another eruptive phase. If this is the case, what might such an eruption look like? Based on the history of Mount St. Helens and the nature of the current seismic activity, a new eruption could involve the extrusion of lava, forming a new dome within the crater. This type of eruption, while dramatic, is often less explosive and less hazardous than the catastrophic 1980 event. However, it could still pose significant risks, particularly to the immediate area around the volcano, including the potential for ashfall, pyroclastic flows, and Lahar's volcanic mud flows that can be triggered by the melting of snow and ice on the volcano's summit. Another scenario is that the current seismic activity could gradually wane without leading to an eruption. This would not be unprecedented. As mentioned earlier, Mount St. Helens has experienced several periods of increased seismic activity since 1980 that did not result in eruptions. 
In this scenario, the current seismic swarm might simply be part of the volcano's ongoing background activity, a sign of its living nature, but not necessarily an indicator of an imminent eruption. A third scenario, and perhaps the most concerning, is that the current seismic activity could be building up to a more significant, explosive eruption. While there are currently no signs suggesting this is the case, the history of Mount St. Helens teaches us that conditions can change rapidly. An explosive eruption could have far-reaching consequences, not only in terms of immediate hazards such as ashfall and pyroclastic flows, but also in terms of longer-term impacts on the environment, the climate, and the economy. Each of these scenarios carries different implications for emergency preparedness and response. As such, monitoring efforts by organizations like the U.S. Geological Survey are crucial. They provide the data needed to assess the likelihood of various scenarios and to develop strategies for mitigating their potential impacts. Thanks for watching this episode of Beyond Discovery. Don't miss the video you see on your screen, you won't believe it.